Recently, ipilimumab and nivolumab show some good long-term outcomes, even for favorable risk patients. Um, previously, uh, the data didn't look as great for favorable risk, so the only ones that were approved were frontline tyrosine kinase inhibitors as well as IO TKI regimens. Do you feel that with this good long-term data for this favorable regimen that there will be more usage of epinevo um, instead of, let's say, watchful waiting or using IOTKI or TKI monotherapy alone for patients? It's an absolutely a, a brilliant uh, observation that you have. Um, for many of my patients with this favorable risk, you know, indolent, slow-growing disease, that is one of the first questions I ask is, do we need to give therapy? And um, oftentimes we do talk about watchful waiting, active surveillance, and intervening only if the disease is truly growing, certainly if patients have symptomatic disease. In my practice, I've actually incorporated a lot of surgery for metastatic lesions or radiation um, to any one site that may be progressing while the rest of the disease is, is rather indolent. Um, you bring up a really good point about ipilimumab and nivolumab. Um, so tomorrow we're going to see um, data from the Checkmate 214 study, which was the large phase three trial of ipilimumab plus nivolumab compared to sinitinib, which was our historic standard of care many, many years ago. Um, we're now seeing nine-year follow-up of that study. And when this study was initially published, we saw ipinevo um, actually had a uh, a hazard ratio of 1.45 for overall survival in the favorable risk disease. And so the thought was maybe sunitinib is better, and maybe VEGF TKI therapies are better for pa patients with favorable risk. Now, as we've continued to follow this data over the past nine years, we've actually seen those curves flip such that patients who got ipilimumab and nivolumab who had a response are having a long-term durable remission to therapy. Um, and I think that's really important because it's changed guidelines. It's ne ipinevo is now a, uh, on our NCCN guidelines for patients with favorable risk disease, um, and it's changed our practice. And so when I have that discussion with that patient about, hey, we're starting systemic therapy, I often do talk about ipinevo because it does have that long-term, the best chance of a long-term durable remission, um, whereas a lot of our TKI-based regimens, while they're great at getting tumor responses, um, we tend to see chronic toxicities and we tend to see resistance to therapy over time.